This is the original pin punisher. I've been bowling all my life. Professional bowling is my passion, and now I'm here to share it with you. So today we are back again with these how to bowl on the sport patterns. Well, today we've got the 42 foot scorpion and it's only like a one to two, one to, yeah, I think it's a one to two. It's a pretty flat. Most of the structure is from about seven to about 15 ish with it kind of flattening out from about 12 to 15, but you do have that little bit of shelf in that zone. So the overall, concentration of oil for this pattern is in the middle part of the lane like usual there's a lot of buff on the outsides but the middle part of the lane is oiled all the way down to 42 feet it's also 30 mils of oil so that is quite a bit of oil on the oil spectrum so we're going to get into how to bowl on this pattern some how to's and what works best if you're looking to get a fast start on this pattern in a tournament or your league you can break this lane down a couple different ways. One, you kind of want a little bit of surface on the ball. You don't want too much surface or else that ball is going to be unusable for this pattern. But if you break down, I would say in between first and second arrow, because this pattern structure, one through five, really doesn't have much oil. But if you get to about like seven, eight, nine, ten, you do see a little bit of oil. For me, I personally had to speed up a little bit if I wanted to play that area. But I noticed I broke it down for a little while while I was doing the video. And once I started to move left of that and kind of throw into it, I noticed I had a great reaction. So in other words, breaking down anywhere from about six to 10. So that four board margin will give you a great spot to have recovery from when you, especially when you start to move left. And when you are playing on top of it, it'll be able to, you'll be able to get your ball to stand up in that uh, part of the lane and you'll be able to get your ball going through the pins because there is a lot of oil on this pattern and a lot of opportunity for your ball to skid. For lane play on this pattern, I found it beneficial to start off pretty close about the second arrow. For me, I'm a slower ball speed player, so I had to feel like I had to pick up my ball speed. But I tried to stay around about the second arrow. I could give it away from me a lot. Well, not a whole lot, but I could give it away a decent amount down lane. But if I, if I threw it away from me pretty up front, then the ball did get trapped and slide off to the right. But a general starting point around this pattern could be anywhere from about eight to 12 at the arrows. It allows you to stay in some of the oil of the pattern, but not the bulk part of it. And then as it gets drier, I kind of just migrated left and just kept angling my ball towards about anywhere from like 12 to eight area. Although I did have some miss right all the way out to five, but I felt like those shots were kind of lucky. So when I attack this pattern, I generally tried to keep my launch angles into the six pin. And then the further I moved left, I got them into about the three six. I never was able to really trap the ball down when I got further left because the, the middle part of this pattern, yes, there's a lot of oil, but it's pretty flat. So you don't have much shape in the pattern when you start moving left. So you do have to keep your angles pretty consistent when you're moving more to the left.
types of cores that I found to be most beneficial on this pattern were uh, a little bit of a lower RG, so you want to be around 248 to 252 range. And the differentials on this, uh, on some of these cores were 035 to 055, which I thought to be kind of interesting because generally on, on something that's kind of flat in the middle with a lot of volume, I wouldn't expect to need that strong of a core, but they ended up being pretty good. So mainly the covers that I used were solid shell balls, which means that it's all solid, there's no pearl. So that allowed the ball to stay smooth. Now I didn't, I did end up throwing the hybrid and the pearl covers later as the pattern broke down, but the solid and the slower response bowling balls definitely got the job done when I had to go a little straighter. But when I moved left, the, the weaker covers definitely started to work a little better for me. So the drillings, I had a ball drilled to roll pretty straight, it's a little bit closer to my axis point, although it's a higher valve angle, but generally I have a higher valve angle ball to go a little straighter because it won't read too early and jump off the spot. It'll, it'll stay in the hook face for a longer period of time and be more continuous than hook stop. I found that when I play straighter, I do need a little bit more of a continuous ball, mainly because of the front part of the lane. Now, when I started to move left, I did end up with some a little bit lower val angles, like on my phase two, I had a val angle of about 35 to 45, but that was drilled with a four and a half inch pin. So yes, it flared a lot, but it wasn't too crazy. It, it allowed to stay, it allowed me to stay pretty, pretty straight still. And it dug in the front part of the lane and all that oil, but stayed smooth down lane. As I migrated left, I kept that same drilling but with a weaker cover and it kind of slid down the lane fairly well and then eventually I went to a higher val angle ball with a longer pin distance which really got it down the lane. So at first I used some shorter pin distances so the ball would kind of face up and just stay pretty stable and then as I migrated left I used some longer pin distances with uh, val angles that allowed the ball to get down lane and stay pretty continuous. Now with the surfaces that was pretty key. Like on my phase two, I kept a decent amount of surface, like a 2000 to a 1000. Same thing with my Gravity Evolve, and it allowed the ball to cut into the pattern without reading too early to the point where it would force me left. So I was able to stay in that kind of sweet spot zone, like in the middle of where the shape is in the pattern with uh, the 2000 and the 1000 grit. Now, as I moved left, I found that a little bit of a shinier ball allowed me to create some angle, but not too much. So I thought that was interesting. I was able to use about a 3,000 to 4,000 grit ball as the pattern broke down. Naturally, that sounds pretty obvious, but not all the time. So those were the covers and the drillings that I used. <laughs> 